Yeah, apologies first for, for a slight technical glitches here at the start. I hope this will not be um, uh, recurrent. Um, welcome to the first unofficial hallway meeting for, um, or the first unofficial meeting for, uh, well, the first meeting for AFDF really, uh, which is an unofficial hallway meeting. Um, and uh, the intent was this, was try to get going as soon as possible. Um, I was hoping that, uh, um, so let's get going. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, this is a, uh, uh, even if it's an unofficial one, uh, it's still an ITF meeting. So you have, the, there's the note file that you should note. Um, basically your will be recorded. Uh, remember to be nice and professional. And then also, of course, remember the IPR guidelines. Uh, so this meeting falls under IPR policy of IITF. Uh, there's a link to the repo where this material is found and also to the notes on code EMD. Um, yep. And here is the long note. Well, I guess you don't need to read that because you probably have it before, but here is if you want to see it. Anyway, here is the agenda for today. Uh, we'll do a quick introduction. Uh, this one I'm right now, um, say a few words on administrative bits and, and do some agenda bashing. So, um, uh, do we have somebody who could take notes? I, I'm taking notes actually. Um, okay. Okay. So, um, do we want to spend so much given that all of the names are quite familiar? Uh, do we want to spend as much time on the tutorial as planned? Um, uh, well, not necessarily. Um, let me see here <clears throat> how, uh, how we are on the, uh, uh, we have some folks that maybe not so, so familiar with this. So <clears throat> I would see us. Yeah. This is a rough timeline, and it's also about if we get questions or discussion points. So that, that, that this is a rough, I would say, a rough uh, outline. Um, of course, the, the faster we can get through the tutorial and the background stuff, the better it is. So um, uh, consider these guidelines, <laughs> not, not rules. Um, briefly, I switched computers. So would someone put a note to the GitHub repo in the chat, please? Or sorry, a link to the GitHub repo in the chat. Yeah. Thank you. Repo or the Cody MD? Oh, oh, it's, it's just, okay. It's the same link. Sorry, I thought it was different somehow. Well, I just put in the GitHub repo as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so, uh, well, of course, since most of you here are familiar, but still we wanted one, at least one intro slide. What is ASDF? And super briefly, this is the um, IFTF working group uh, that, that is being formed to specify the semantic definition format. And it follows up on a both with the same name uh, that took place at IFTF 108. And uh, then what is SDF? We will talk a lot more about that, or Karsten will talk a lot more about that in a moment. Um, briefly, it was created by the One Data Model um, group um, as the way to describe IoT device information models in a highly portable fashion uh, to, to um, improve semantic interoperability across different IoT ecosystems. And the first spec uh, is, um, uh, well, the, the outcome of the one data model work, and which is now the input to this work, is this uh, SDF, the first SDF spec, SDF 1.0. And uh, it is, there's a link there, you can look, find it to find it on ITF. And um, the intent with this working group, of course, is to improve on that work and, and continue building on it. Um, So the question is, of course, where are we now? 
Uh, we are, I shouldn't say limbo, but um, we have passed the uh, ISG reviews, as we understand it. There are no final objections. We have sent the final charter to Barry, and um, so really we should be up and running any day now. Um, so I guess it's just uh, basically a couple of days of, un until we are formally a working group. Um, and that's also one reason why we um, uh, had this unofficial meeting here today, that we can't really call for a meeting until we're a really working group. The chairs, uh, Michael Richardson and myself, Nicholas Vidal. Um, and here are the rough uh, plans uh, from a I should say, meeting perspective. We had this hallway meeting today uh, just to get going and do a brief tutorial. We have a virtual interim, hopefully in about two weeks' time, so we can uh, call for adoption on the uh, on the first draft. Uh, then, uh, as we get closer to ITF 109, we plan to do some in the hackathon week before ITF 109, do some preparation work for STF 11. I have a long list of ideas there. And then <clears throat> for the actual ITF 109, uh, there is a two hour meeting slot requested. So uh, we will meet them. Yes. And if you have no idea one date one data model is, um, uh, Karsten will talk more about this. This is a in a nutshell picture uh, that I used. Um, basically, the problem we're trying to address is that there are several standardized data models, um, but there's a lack of interoperability across these ecosystems, which making integration a, a hassle. Um, to address that, we tried two solutions. One was to select one ecosystem and everybody joins that, and that of course did not work out. So instead, we decided to facilitate translation between the ecosystems via a neutral format. And that neutral format is of course SDF. So SDF is one output of this one data model work, um, and that is now completely handed over to, to IETF to further develop. Uh, then we have work on tool chains that translate between SDF and the various ecosystems. And of course, we're also, while we're at it, uh, we'll be developing a set of um, IoT device models or IoT data models that can be widely reused. And if you want to know more about onedatamodel.org, uh, there is the um, uh, uh, link there at the bottom. One dm.org nicely. <clears throat> Good. Um, that was my entry slide. So, um, are there any? Before we continue, are there any additional things people would like to add to the agenda before we continue? I can go back to the agenda. So you see it. Any additional agenda points? No, if not, then I'll let Karsten take over. And um, Karsten, can you drive the slides from your slide? Yes, I'll try to. <laughs> Someone fixed the, the bug in uh, Chrome that made it take two minutes to do this, so I now only need 20 seconds for that. So, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, so uh, I want to give a, a brief overview of uh, SDF, the uh, semantic definition format. Uh, some of you will know some of these slides because I gave a similar overview six months ago about uh, what then was SDF, but this, these are slightly updated uh, slides, so there, there are some uh, new, um, there is some new discussion uh, in there. So um, the, the image that uh, Niklas showed should uh, have made clear what we are trying to do here. So we have uh, several uh, ecosystem specific SDOs. Uh, standard developments organizations in IoT these days, and they usually do their own data models. They don't often actually call them data models, but th th that is changing. Anyway, they standardize the, the data that their IoT devices are, are changing, and they have their own 
way to document them as well. And given that applications may need to work with things that are standardized in, in several of these eco uh, systems, uh, we, we are in a position where we actually need to translate uh, model information between the ecosystems. Uh, and uh, well, one-to-one -one, uh, translators are hard to do because really there are hundreds of these um, uh, data models. So at, at some point in 2019, uh, people uh, decided to, to start uh, liaisons, liaison work between the different SDOs. Uh, the one data model group is an informal liaison group, and this really is um, about a way to to harmonize data models, to have a way to translate be the, between them. And the obvious way to do this is uh, 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 defining a common format. And that is what, what SDF is uh, trying uh, to be. So SDF until uh, summer has been defined by uh, this uh, informal liaison a group so that there are several organizations there uh, like like OCF and OMA and so on uh, that uh, have uh, significant significantly contributed uh, to that and uh, essentially what SDF does is it defines classes of things and these things have um, interactions these interactions are uh, defined by affordances, this is a term stolen from from uh, interface design, where you have a, a device with a button and, and a knob and so on. These are affordances, and we use them for the different kinds of interaction that a, a device can have, like reading the temperature and setting a set point and, and things like that. So these affordances are not uh, uh, completely random. We found that we have uh, three major interaction patterns, uh, property, action, and event. Uh, this will probably be refined at some point in time, but right now it, it's a good way to uh, start. And what SDF essentially does is, is naming these patterns and providing uh, models about the data that these interaction patterns exchange. So when you read a temperature, uh, you probably get something that looks like a number, and uh, then you need to know what unit that number is, is in, and maybe other information as well, like when was the sensor last calibrated, uh, uh, and so on. So this is the kind of data we want to uh, define uh, in the simple definition form. So it's not a general data modeling tool, it's a tool for modeling the data that are um, interchanged as part of, of performing an interaction pattern. So the, the uh, structure of uh, SDF specification that uh, one data model came up with uh, was uh, putting these into JSON documents. That's um, a kind of a logical decision when you think about the fact that this mainly goes into translators. So everything that, that's good for a translator to work from and to, to work into is useful. And JSON is kind of the, the standard and data, uh, generic data model that, that we use for things uh, these days. And we also use RFC 6901 JSON pointers uh, to point into these JSON documents because we, we don't just uh, need to, to talk about whole documents we want to um, reuse data types exposed by, by uh, specification and so on. Um, and um, in the long run, we want to have something like a basic core set of, of data types that, that specifications can reference. Uh, SDF 1.0 contains everything that's needed for that, uh, but we haven't actually started exercising uh, that. So I would say that the mechanism that is in SDF 1.0 is untested, and uh, we really have to start making use of that uh, to, to be able to say, okay, that, that's really it, we can live with that, and we probably will come up with a few tweaks for uh, SDF 1.1. So SDF 1.1 is, is my, my name for the next version of SDF, but of course, you might decide that we don't want to do it now, that we will do it in SDF 1.2 or 
uh, whatever. So that, that's the, the purpose of the next segment to, to talk about solutions and, and prioritizing. So let, let's talk about those interaction uh, patterns. And, and I said there are properties, actions, and events. And these actually come in, in some uh, variations. So that there are readable, read-only properties. There are writable uh, properties. And uh, if, if you are used to thinking of uh, IoT devices in terms of REST, then this slide is useful for you. Otherwise, it's maybe not that useful. Uh, so a, a property has something like a get operation where the client, which is not, not an uh, one DM term, not an SDF term, but uh, it, it's a REST term, where the client can take the initiative and, and read some data. And a property can sometimes be put, for instance, if it's a set point or, or something that, that's not just a, a measurement. Uh, there are actions. Uh, so for instance, there, there might be an action to uh, switch uh, uh, to a different scene in the lighting uh, system. So actions uh, are modeled as uh, post interactions and they have input data and they also have output data. And finally, there are events uh, which uh, don't uh, directly exist in REST. There are various hacks to add events to REST. And there the initiative is on this thing side. Something has happened and the, the thing wants to let you know. And uh, uh, this is uh, essentially providing some output data. So we see we have um, most data specifications and uh, we have a little bit um, of, of interaction uh, specification as well. Um, so, um, yeah, how, how you exactly do this uh, may be a little bit uh, different in different uh, applications. So in the REST application, an action might have something created that will provide event-like things while this event action is going on and so on. We haven't gone into that level of uh, detail uh, so we, we haven't uh, said how actions and events might, might relate uh, and so on. And uh, actually we have properties that are observable, uh, which means that occasionally the, the thing actually will have the in initiative and provide data to the client in the same way as if the uh, client had done a property get. So finally, we, we have uh, uh, events and <clears throat> these are probably the least well-defined, but uh, at least we have a way to say what the output data uh, will be. So um, all these are talking about data um, and uh, talking about data, first of all, we, we need to talk about their shape. So is it a single number or is it maybe an array of, of numbers or uh, is it a string? <clears throat> and uh, these, these data definitions uh, can be made in an affordance definition or they can be made separately, in particular, if you want to, to uh, use a common data type, uh, you would uh, do that. And for the data definitions, we currently use a subset of JSON schema org uh, terms augmented by SDF specific terms such as content format, nullable, scale, whatever. <clears throat> and what we haven't really done, we, we have talked about, and, and uh, probably a few ecosystems have prototypes for that, uh, mapping information that provides a way to bind these data definitions into the ecosystem specific formats and encoding. So it's not the point of the data definitions to tell you that there are five bits and the third bit from left does that. Um, the, the data division would, would uh, stop at the fact that there are five uh, Boolean uh, values. So th this is an example of the more general observation that uh, really uh, SDF is about information models. So we, we don't want to tie an a harmonized data model down to one specific representation. So whether you use uh, uh, an uh, integer that goes from zero to 65,000 and 32,000 means zero, um, or you use a floating point value, uh, this is really not important for the information model level. 
but it's important for the bindings. Um, so that, that's something we will have to uh, uh, work on. And uh, we also will have to work on uh, making the semantics uh, more well-defined. So we might want to do something like adding RDF-style links um, to our information model so we, we actually know uh, what the names uh, mean. So if you have a data model that has three fields called R, G, and B, uh, that doesn't mean that you understand what these these uh, three fields actually mean. And it would be good to, to actually tie them, for instance, to primary colors in, in some color space definition uh, and so on. <clears throat> so uh, we have a gap here between the description capabilities of JSON schema.org, which is the data modeling language, and uh, the information model that, that we are really trying to uh, uh, define. And this currently comes up um, in the, the uh, enum uh, concept. So um, JSON schema.org has uh, um, enum data type, which is essentially just a set of values, which can be, for instance, strings and integers. And uh, each of these denotes some specific uh, concept. Uh, so uh, to the lower right on the slide, uh, you see the enum that the OCF uh, battery material model uh, uses to describe the, the uh, chemistry and the construction uh, of, of the battery. And this is just a set of strings. These are the strings you can use. And if you have a potato battery on your IoT device, which you might have because it might be a toy, um, then uh, you only have lemon potato there, even though you do not employ lemons. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's somewhat difficult to define these uh, enums and they, they kind of get arbitrary after a while. Uh, there might be spelling errors. So the Pulvermacher's chain, um, the guy is actually called Pulvermacher and there should be an apostrophe here to, to say it's Pulvermacher's chain. Um, and uh, also it, it's 150 years obsolete. So no, nobody uses these anymore at this point in time. So it's not even clear they, they, that they should be in there. So the, these enums are difficult and um, it, it would uh, probably be nice to be able to point to something that, that has done the work of enumerating the cases. So if we were talking about cheese firmness, for instance, um, cheese firmness actually has a definition somewhere, I forget wh where, and we would not get the idea of defining our own kind of uh, uh, cheese firmness enum, but we would uh, like to point to that. But that may not take the form of an enum of strings. Um, and on the other side, uh, on, on the data model side, um, yeah, uh, so maybe somebody uses the number 34 for lead acid gel batteries. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. that. That would be the job of the binding to say that what's lead acid gel in the model is uh, actually 34 in the representation. Um, yeah, so uh, in STF 1.0, we, we only have the, the possibilities that JSON schema.org gives us uh, here, uh, and that leads to some pretty questionable definitions. Uh, so is an alarm always one of the five categories, general, fire, flood, weather, or security? Um, and uh, we also need to think about uh, extensibility. Uh, how do we provide extensibility? Do we use something like Ayana for registering code points? Uh, do we use URI so every body can uh, define an extension? Do we do both? And that's clearly something that, that SDF 1.1 uh, needs to address because we are getting more and more of these uh, uh, enums and need a good way to handle them in an evolvable way. So from, from these uh, basic components, property, action, and event, and, and the data definitions that are referenced from these, um, we can build objects and things, and that's our composition uh, mechanism at the moment, and that's probably also something that needs more testing um, at this point in time. We have a few STF things, uh, but mostly we have been defining STF objects. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you have an outlet with, uh, if you have a, 
extension strip with four outlets and, and uh, one fuse and, and one uh, metal oxide, uh, oxide varista in there, um, how, how do you build the, that composition? And how do you handle the, the repetition that is in that composition with the four outlets that are otherwise uh, equal? So we haven't really uh, done that a lot. And uh, when we did STF 1.0, we deliberately decided not to include the JSON schema object type, uh, which uh, really leaves a big hole in STF 1.0 because we cannot really describe a composition at the data uh, model level at all. But the question we, we first have to answer is, uh, do we really want to handle it at the data model level? Or is there something in SDF that describes how this composition um, is done? So simply providing several properties also is a form of composition, but it's not always the right way uh, to, to handle it. So some of the composition will be above the property level, some will be below. Uh, the property level, and we have to figure that one out. Um, yeah, we, we specify SDF um, specifications, and since the specifications are JSON documents, we also can specify them in a data definition language, and in this case, we actually want to use the full power of a data definition language. So the, the current draft has a CDDL-based uh, specification, and that is also translated into two JSON schema org uh, format definitions, one that is uh, uh, very open, so the, the framework one, so all extension points are open, but that also means that a typo that you make uh, might be mistaken for, for an extension. And we have the, the validation uh, schema that is limited to, to what is defined uh, now. So uh, CDDL uh, has recently grown a feature called feature uh, and uh, can, can handle that in one specification and on the, in the JSON schema all translation, we handle that with two different uh, specifications. And of course, uh, that's not all we need. So there's also some English prose um, in, in a markdown document uh, that uh, uh, is the, the internet uh, draft. And uh, there's also tooling that we use that, that might provide some additional uh, specifics. So um, last slide, where are we? Uh, SCF 1.0 has been stable since June. Uh, we have a couple hundred data models in, in various repositories in the one data model. Uh, organization, playground, exploratory unit tests, um, and we have uh, tools. Um, we have been focusing a bit on getting the work group established in the last few months, but also on defining one data model processes that really aren't the, the domain of the ASDF working group that, that is focusing on the SDF specification. But of course, 1DM itself needs to have ways of, of doing things, in particular doing the harmonization. Um, so uh, given that the ASDF working group is almost existing now, uh, we can uh, put the focus back on, on evolving SDF. And uh, so we should uh, define objectives for SDF 1.1, look at solutions, and, and start deciding. And all that shouldn't be done uh, on on uh, um, yeah on, on a piece of paper. It should really be uh, tested. And one way to test this uh, will be uh, next month uh, before IETF 109, the the hackathon that comes with every recent uh, IETF. And I have put in a hackathon project uh, called ASDF. Uh, getting ready for SDF 1.1. So that was my quick overview. And uh, before we go into a full uh, discussion, is, is there, are there maybe questions, verifying questions that we want to discuss?
So I'm not anybody sure. else. Unmute yourself and go ahead. If there's any questions? Everything is super clear. So, Karsten, maybe you could say just two words <clears throat> and tell us why this is not Yang. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I actually had a slide at the buff uh, that, that I would uh, probably like to show uh, at this point. So Yang is su supposed to be the data model that people generate code from. Um, so it, it's very, very implementation oriented. It's not designed to bring data models from different organizations together in, in some form. So it, it's a very specific data model. A lot of a lot of representation questions are simply nailed down in a Yang model. You don't don't get to write an information model in Yang. It's always a, a data model. So it's not really set up uh, to to do this harmonization kind of work. This doesn't mean it could not be done with Yang, uh, but I think uh, it, it just wouldn't work because it would be too much. Uh, much effort. Thanks. So from, from the point of view of SDF, Yang is maybe just another <laughs> ecosystem that we want to translate into and from. And there, there has been some discussion already on, on doing this. Um, of course, we would need people from, from the Yang ecosystem uh, to actually help us doing that. Maybe to add to that, um, uh, I think it's also it's largely about where these things come from, right? Where, I mean, so SDF comes from working hard to translate between data models, and that puts a certain set of requirements on the tools you have. And uh, Yang did not work out there. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Karsten. Um, so, um, uh, hopefully everybody is now totally clear on what SDF is today. And uh, <clears throat> with that, the, the, the second main topic of today was to discuss about this SDF 1.1, what that would be, um, uh, what that will contain. And uh, to do that, uh, Michael Koster put together some slides and um, uh, where he uh, well, describes a bit of the, <clears throat> uh, the outstanding issues, elaborates a bit more on, on what Karsten mentioned as problems going forward that we would try to address. Okay. Um, um, sh oops, should I share my yeah, screen? Sure. Okay, yes, I can. Uh, oh, let me see. Give me a second. There it is. Uh, there we go. So, uh, this basically is uh, a result of trying, <clears throat> trying to uh, take all of the existing data models that are in various ecosystem and SDO formats, uh, and make uh, SDF models for them. And so there were some things that were really awkward and difficult and also other things that sort of showed up. So this is really work that was in progress when we did a feature freeze of SDF. And this is stuff that might have made it into 1.0 if we had spent another few months, but also makes a lot of sense to um, consider in the broader context now since it was um, mainly the gaps that were exposed by trying to include more diversity in the models. And so very specifically, um, as Karsten said, we've been focusing more on the object definitions, which are the, the reusable, uh, the most reusable elements. You're supposed to be able to take an object like on-off power control and use it in any kind of device because it's very, 
very generic and it's going up the stack to thing definitions and composing them. We haven't done a lot of work yet, but this is sort of about defining uh, or, or expressing what's already been defined in other uh, ecosystems like Zigbee and, and Bluetooth low energy and, and, uh, and you know, OMA and, and what have you, OCF. So um, these are things that showed up when, when trying to make good representations of existing models and the point of view here is that someone from that existing ecosystem, like a Zigbee, someone who knows Zigbee, should be able to look at an SDF model and say, oh, yeah, I, I recognize all of that. And that that's even easier for me to work with because it's JSON and it's, uh, you know, more abstract and it separates the binding and the, and the detail representation from the semantics and all of these things that but we basically still have to have the basic patterns. And so this is sort of where there, there are some specific patterns that that weren't easy to represent and need a few more um, constraints and features in the language. So it's enumerations, as Karsten uh, mentioned. There's something about reusing SDF property that uh, with the OMA lightweight MTM, it's fairly simple, but it, it needs an extension. Um, there's also composing SDF data, SDF property, which Karsten mentioned as well. And then, then there's a specific uh, issue with uh, the way that values are used that seems to bubble up to the information model and isn't just an encoding issue, but um, to the extent that we should figure out how to, how to abstract things in SDF so that they are just encoding issues whenever possible. So these are the four things that uh, that kind of need to be addressed in order to create good models of uh, in, uh, of things that um, can represent all all the different uh, contributors to uh, one DM, as well as they're they're useful for other kinds of organizations like digital twins and things like that that um, that we've been looking at. So. Um, any questions here? If no questions, I'll just jump right into the the four and give you an outline of each. There's a GitHub issue for each of these for the detailed discussion, so I'm not sure how how deep we need to go today. But basically, for for enumerations, what we'd like to provide is, I think, as Karsten mentioned, uh, in, in in one DM, a semantic anchor for each piece of the enum and so the json schema.org gives you an array and and you have an array index for each selection but it doesn't really give you a a semantic anchor and whether a json pointer is really what we want or something that's more an iana registered thing or how that works um, we need to talk about but i think that at the very least sdf needs a feature to make this uh to make this um, abstract and extensible, right? To, to not nail things down. And so it could be a simple array enum that had pointers to some IANA registration, you know, URIs, but even that would would not be very reusable within SDF because it's it's kind of too opaque. So what we're looking at is something that is a little less opaque. But let's let's figure out the balance here. So we want uh, as Karsten said, we don't want to nail it down, whether it's a string or an integer or whatever. We want that to be kind of a mapping to a, a, run, a runtime or, a um, you know, and really for, interop for interoperability on networks, we, we end up choosing a, 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 a representation, but we don't really want to nail that down at the most abstract layer of the model. We want to be able to layer that on. Uh, we want to be able to have this, you know, as mapping files, this loose coupling and, and um, Basically, we want to, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we want to preserve the JSONness of the system and not have it be too opaque. It just an array index is a little difficult. And I guess here's a this slide. Next slide shows a little more of the what the point is. So the the proposal is a, a new class in STF called STF enum that has it's its own thing and allows you to type a data as an STF enum where each selection is its own SDF uh, node, if you will, or, or, or thing you can point out with a JSON pointer. And it, it has a string and then other, what we call qualities in SDF. I've only shown a description here, but you could add, um, um, you know, default and constant, and you could sort of cast things 
um, a lot of the SDF constructs could be used in um, what we call mapping files as well. So if you had JSON schema constraints you wanted to add, you could do that in a mapping file and not in the in the basic model. So what I'm showing here is just the minimum of the basic model, which would be each selection of the enum has a semantic anchor, which is the I've shown with the the JSON pointer here, SDF data on off state enum off. That is fully descriptive, and if you know what SDF data and enum classes are, you can pretty much decompose this path into a, um, a position in the model. And so as you have a more complex model, you can do things like um, uh, dereference the, the links. And we want to be able to have the enum elements part of that processing of, of being able to be pointed at with the JSON pointer and have each one be its own uh, Thing. And then if we decide there's an IANA registration or something like that, that can be done explicitly as a um, as maybe one option, maybe the preferred option, but not not to lock it down as the only way to do things in SDF. So that's that's kind of the idea with enums and what um, where I think is going with that. And basically, what what happens is, and, and the reason kind of needs to be this way, the use case justification for it is that different ecosystems represent the actual on-off values that go over the wire as booleans or ones and zeros or text strings. And so uh, we, we needed, we couldn't really even harmonize models if we had to pick one of these representations um, up front. We, what we want to do is be able to have different models um, represented with the same SDF and then have bindings. And then eventually we're gonna to have to choose a single binding uh, for, for some small, smaller scope network interoperability. Like if I wanna certify devices in, in Zigbee, I have to kind of choose a, a wire format, but, but that's not really what we're doing with SDF for a level above that. So that's, that's why this is needed. All right, any questions, comments on enums? Let me know if I'm going too slow or uh, you can speed up a little bit. I'm kind of conscious of the time here. Um, so the other, this, this is an easy one, really. It's reusable SDF properties. So in Ipso Smart Objects, they have these reusable properties. So I can say Ipso Smart Objects sensors all have uh, a current value. And sometimes, you know, it's a, a different type or whatever data type. It might be the same type. But, but basically it's common of all, all a bunch of different, what they call object definitions also. And so we wanted to be able to have SDF property to be something that you could just define as a reusable thing for everybody, uh, everyone that participates in SDF or everyone that uses one data model or whatever. We wanted to be able to have the property to be a, a standalone definition and also to be uh, reusable within other property definitions. And I think we would probably already provide a way of reusing it in other property definitions that we don't uh, disallow in the schema, but we wanted to add it to the, to the spec. And this is mostly for to handle what Ipso Smart Objects is doing, but it's also um, the design pattern or useful design pattern. So uh, that's another one, fairly simple and self-contained, but. Um, not allowed right now, and we need to add it. So oh, more, right, yeah. Now, yeah. right now we can have an SDF a ref in an SDF property. I think, what, yes. What else do we need? I think, well, we need SDF property to be able to be, def well, actually, that may not be an SDF. This, this may be more of a one data model constraint with the way we organize our database. There may not be any issue but an SDF file should be able to consist of, uh, a valid SDF file should be able to consist of only SDF property definition and shouldn't be required to contain an object. And I'm not sure what the schema looks like. So it kind of needs to be uh, checked. And also we need to build the, the model because we don't really have an example of this. So it, I, I, as I said, this is probably very simple and may not even need a schema change, but I think maybe at the top level, we might need to allow a valid STF instance to contain only property definitions. And I think now we're only allowing object thing and data, but I'm not sure about that. 
Yeah, I think we need to to actually generate examples that yep. use this, uh, yep. and uh, make sure that our various tools can actually act on specifications that have this. So I think there, there's work to be done, uh, but it may not be specification work, uh, or it may only be specification work after we learn about what doesn't work so well with what we have defined now. Mm, that's good, yes, exactly. Okay. Okay, so moving on. Uh, composite property is the thing that's probably the most interesting because um, when we look at the way a lot of well, there are a few different use cases. One obvious one is uh, the multiple sensors that are offered by Bluetooth low energy and, and other and other uh, specifications where uh, data from multiple sensing elements can be combined and returned together in a in a you know complex format. So the generally, I think, as Karsten mentioned earlier, what we'd like to do here is stick to the semantics and not not be too constraining on formats and representations. And that even includes schemas where it might be a JSON schema or an XML schema where tag names are part of the schema that aren't really part of the data model, the data model semantics anyway, where tag, tag names are something that you sort of put on over the wire and have the endpoints be able to recognize. But, you know, to build them into the data model um, is, is kind of getting into what we were calling mapping and protocol binding. So what we'd like to do is be able to compose properties, I think, without uh, more freely without uh, constraining the structure of what the com composite property looks like when it goes over the wire or over the air. So uh, it's it's kind of like what we already do for actions and events where we say an action might have multiple input properties where you could send it. Um, the most obvious common example is probably uh, changing the brightness of a light bulb where you want it to smoothly change brightness from the dimmer to the brighter over a period of a one or two seconds. And so you send a time parameter along with the uh, target brightness or the incremental brightness or however that works. Um, so you're sending multiple data items. Well, what, what, what happens is a, a lot of the uh, data models and IoT devices and interactions out there are sort of complex. It probably the easiest one to think of is RGB, as as Carson mentioned earlier. The RGB data is one that we use, but it goes both ways. RGB is sort of like where you'd like to treat it as a property, but it has internal elements. And there's also times where you'd like to have roll up a number of properties into a larger sort of thing and treat it as a like a configuration data uh, element or something like that. And that's that's very common in a lot of IoT data models, especially ones that are more service oriented and less less just about de describing simple devices. So, um, in both of those cases, though, the requirement is similar in that you you want a sort of a it's sort of starting to look like the enum only it's for multiple elements where you want a semantic anchor for each element and a have, be able to have a description and be able to have it to be its own extension point for adding more qualities and constraints and schemas and things like that in the mapping. So you want to be able to point at it with a JSON pointer for the mapping. And uh, also in, in, in describing the composite properties, some of, sometimes the optionality constructs are needed like any of. So you might have a couple of different optional um, collections is another way to think about it. collections of data elements that you can either look one way or another um, or a few different ways. Um, and then some elements, sub elements may be required and some not. So um, you could either have RGBW and RGB as two separate definitions, or you could have an RGBW where the W channel is optional. And there, there might be, you know, this is where when you converge data models, you maybe have to come up with a, a common practice, but you have to be able to express the, the different ways. And so this seems to be required. Um, but the data schemas really should be part of the, the protocol bindings and the mapping files. And SDF is not, doesn't really say that you can't make a data schema part of 
your SDF model. In fact, there may be a lot of cases where we do want to do that, but um, it shouldn't be required either. It shouldn't be just assumed that there's a data schema where you have data elements. It should be that the the data element in SDF uh, should base in the in the core file, if you will, or the abstraction should uh, describe the data elements themselves, and then there should be a mapping file or a binding that describes what the what the um, structure looks like as it uh, it's passed between endpoints. So that's um, as an example. Larry, can you can you yes. ask, can you explain that a little bit more? Maybe you have an example. I guess you do. Okay. I, I do have an example. Yeah. I do. So, awesome. Yeah. The idea is, uh, but this is just an abstract example. It isn't even RGB or anything, but a simple property. This is just to show kind of what we're talking about. Okay. So the simple property is just like I say. Here's a property. It's type string. Here's a compound property, and it has a, a data declaration that's similar to other SDF data declarations that we use in actions and, and events. And it says that the interaction with this property, this compound property, has separate elements that we can, you know, compose differently, and some of them are required and some of them aren't. And there may be different types. I might be sending a number and a string together. And I, I want to treat this, I, I, I don't want to have to wrap this up in actions and events in order to send the, the compound data. I want to be able to just do pub sub or read write on it. And that's why it needs to be defined as a kind of compound data like this. So the idea is that we, we could reuse this inline SDF um, data definition to provide uh, these, these named elements in the structure that each have their own semantic anchor. And I, I should show the JSON pointer for this as well, but of course you could have SDF property, compound one, SDF data element one. So again, if you know the uh, of the ontology, you can you can basically graph that out and you can understand the that. Um, and then when you can annotate it in a structure in thing description in W3C thing description or something like that, you can say Here's my schema for the structure, and you can annotate the schema with these semantic elements and say this part of the schema is element one, and this part of the schema carries element two. But we want to avoid that mapping here. And so it's just, we just say here are two data elements that are part of this compound property. And I think this is probably the right, this is the abstraction that seems to cover all of the pieces that uh, I've seen so far, anyway. Right. So, um, questions now. <laughs> Obviously, the the other thing is unsaid is you could have multiple layers of this, and you could have obviously uh, some some folks are saying, well, maybe in SDF we should have only one layer. We should say you could you could have collections of simple properties, but not collections of collections. And so that's a further discussion that we need to to have. But to me. Uh, I have seen cases where there are already things that we would want to represent with more than one layer, but we'd, we'd have to have specific examples, I guess, if we, uh, if there's some, uh, um, you know, opposition to just having it be unlimited. Okay, uh, the last one is just uh, a, a pattern that comes up that what is interesting to think about how to model it. And so basically they, it seems like they do it to save space and all of that and really like to use a byte for multiple things, but it's not like a, a bitmap where you use a byte to have multiple separate elements. We, we kind of have a good pattern for that. That's just an array. But um, this is for more of where you reserve a few values of a, of a scalar in order to make them uh, overriding exclusive settings to the value. So the, an example is a Zigbee light, you can say when the light starts up, and that being I have a power failure and power is restored, what's the light gonna do? <laughs> you know, and the, the, the earlier ones just went to full brightness, which most people found extremely annoying at 3 a.m. So um, there's a setting now uh, that you can either restore the last brightness, which is what most of them like to do, but also some of them are set to minimum brightness because there is a safety factor there. If I, if I have a power failure and the, I want my lights to come on, you know, if it's, if it's a legitimate emergency. So 
there are some compromises there. And these are this, but basically it also has a value that you could set. So, oh, when 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 the light starts up, set it at 50%. So they encoded all this in a single uh, parameter, uh, which makes sense, a single property in SDF. But you know, it's 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 kind of weird because it has both uh, you know, a range, scalar range, which is limited. It, 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 you know, um, so what makes sense is to borrow a construct from JSON schema. This is like to me the most literal representation, and say this property can be can be any of uh, these two uh, things. It can be either a number between one and 254 that start up the current level, or it can be an, an, a selection from this enum where I have two constant values of zero and 255. Now, again, you, you could you know, omit the values and put them in a mapping file. In this case, I've chosen to say, well, we're going to carry the, the values in the schema, but you could also say, well, I might want to do it with a, a you know, 16-bit number or something like that, or some other way of mapping it out. But um, this would, this just shows how it would map out if you decided to put the mapping right in the schema, or right in the um, SDF file. That's um, those are the four cases, and I, I don't really have a conclusion. I just sort of the GitHub issues for these, and there's some good discussion that Arsten has started already. There are others too. There are other folks that have some other things that they'd like to see in 1.1. So this is just from my perspective, based on the things that are um, basically blocking issues for being able to use SDF in these other ecosystems like Zigbee and Bluetooth, where um, maybe not completely blocking, but what it would take to make them uh, really want to use SDF and happy with it and would you know, create more uh, ease of use for, for them. And and really in a lot so, of other cases, I think they're good general cases, but they're driven by the need to to get these other ecosystems in. So Michael, can you, uh, so this is this this business where of course we have a different, different, different values or different, um, I'm gonna <laughs> say ages maybe is the, my physics background term, right? To, to these things. Um, for these, for this, these things, like you said, the fifty percent value is 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 not a value in the in the normal set of brightnesses, um, or the last value is not a no, is not is outside of that completely. So, so this pattern you're talking about yeah, here on that, this, that, yeah, this yeah. pattern that 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 there are uh, uh, different kinds of things. So, what about the issue of so so we would we can adapt SDF to deal with these things, but what about the issue of okay, so you want to be able to round trip this this data model into which came from zigbee now you want to be able to round trip it into i don't know um someone else right who doesn't have that mechanism and you want to come back with the with with reasonable data is that a goal um well it it is and so it, the part of the discussion around that is 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 this a fundamental pattern or is this already too much of a mapping in the in the at this level right and so I had another straw man pattern that was like, well, let's just declare it as two separate things. There's a level and there's a setting. And then you have to have a way of saying they're exclusive. And that might be a, a, a better pattern overall. But I think that's, I think you're hinting at where the discussion needs to go on. Well, on. yeah. So, so I think it's about not just about what can SDF represent because SDF is trying to represent the superset of everything else. But at the same time, it has to also be subsetable into what those other things can represent, so that we can get stuff out of it, right? Well, within like, reason, right? I mean, there may maybe this is an example of the first time you look at this, you say, "Oh, that's ugly. I would never. That's 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 bad design." But then you think about it, and you think, "Well, actually, it kind of makes sense. The way it's encoded is um, efficient, you know." But um, actually, as a design pattern, I wouldn't want to prohibit it, right? But there might be others that you could say, well, that's that's really something that we have to model around, if you will, a workaround. Uh, we haven't encountered any of those yet, but um, but we're not so stuck on everything absolutely has to be represented. You know, we have to be able to, it has to be lossless. But well, that's what I'm trying around. to say. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. If you go from one ecosystem into SDF into another ecosystem, and then you expect to go back again. 
right? The 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 you know the ecosystem that doesn't have a way of of representing something, we're going to lose that data. You can't trans you can't you can't translate into that and without losing the data. If I'm not mistaken, right? That yeah, that's basically the the idea exactly. Is that we we want to be able to allow you to model all these different ways that people have of representing data, but do it in an abstract way that doesn't exclude any of them, which is the problem with enums. Yeah, so in this example, the, the obvious next step is to add a maximum device value permitted. Um, well, if you wanted to have, yeah, I mean, so the logic of devices might be extended to, to add that. And then you know, when you did that, you would have to change the encoding in this case, because I'm, you know, I'm specifying the encoding here, but, but basically, a more abstract pattern would just say type number, SDF. In fact, I think the example that's in the GitHub issue doesn't have the, the, the value constraints. It just says type number and it says SDF enum minimum device set to previous value. So in that abstraction, you could very easily extend this by adding more values to the enum. Um, of course, your mapping rule would have to uh, be something like subtract all the enum values from the range and then, uh, you know, or, or something like that, right? Or it might even be more ad hoc. Well, I hope that's what you were getting at. I mean, as well yes. as the extensibility, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, adding the constraints definitely hurts extensibility. <laughs> So I think we will be we will be sort of treading this path of, of there's always the risk of, of um, uh, complications when translation because these ecosystems are built differently they have different capabilities and so on but I think the, the, we, obviously the goal would be the, 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 the hopeful goal is, is something lossless but on the path there we will ensure that things are useful even if they are not perfectly lossless. Yeah, and, and, and I think that the takeaway for me and, and really why I thought it was relevant to show the constraints as part of the model is that probably the more abstract, the better in terms of getting convergence. But um, I, you keep going back to, well, also, though, at some point, we all have to agree. Well, you know, here's where, where, where it comes down to in the runtime, you could have two different runtimes. You could have a runtime where it's important that everyone agree on the same set of mappings and constraints so that you can do code generation on constrained devices and have them all plug and play on a, on a network. But you can also say, well, I want to do my runtime such that it's adaptable and I want to be able to take my mapping files and generate a, a mapping bridge that has two different endpoints. It has one endpoint that, that takes one set of constraints and it has another endpoint that takes a different set of constraints and it adapts one ecosystem to another and it does that uh, dynamically. And we're, we're building, you know, examples of both of those um, as, as in terms of demos and what have you. But in any case, it still seems to be that the more abstract the base model is with with the constraints and schemas and formats as part of mappings, that that's much better. And I think that the, the meta thing here, and I don't have a slide on it, but I, I'm, I'm looking at how do you then standardize the mappings so that I can, I can really trade mapping files around, even though they're, this is where the extension points are. So we're not really looking at standardizing all the vocabulary, but how do we, how do we do this? You know, if I apply a set of ID numbers that for Zigbee and a different set of ID numbers for Bluetooth, but it's the same models, shouldn't the mapping files be at least sort of similar and be used similar syntax and processing? So that's that's an area that we're, and, and also even when you look at what a thing does, a thing takes a, a set of object definitions that are very abstract and it might add these constraints when you define a thing. So you might say, my thing uses startup current level and, and it, it, it uh, 
it, it encodes uh, the number as a 1 to 254, and it encodes the enum as these values, right? And you can say that I, I have a specialized thing that uh, specializes these objects. Or you could say I have a thing that's generic, and I have a mapping file that maps my thing to my ecosystem. And so there, there are a bunch of choices in workflow and uh, that, that, that um, I think still need to be prototyped and patterned out. But I think we're well enough informed for the basic language features now that we can we can do some fairly well contained examples and, and kind of like converge on some of these features. And I think these are this is a good starting set at least. And then we we want to get more input on what what other I know Water had asked for some other features as well, but I, I'm not sure I, it was objects of objects and and whether that use case was satisfied by some of these. And so we'll, we have some other requirements that we need to look at as well. Yeah, that's correct. So would it be worth stepping into some of the issues that in GitHub at this point to ground where we're going? Um, yeah, if this I if there's nothing uh, uh, more on the agenda, we have uh, 18 minutes and uh, but I could well, that, I could, that is that is actually what is next in the agenda is approaches for addressing them and uh, uh, prior yeah, to, prior excuse to, me. Yes, go ahead, please. Hello, uh, I'm Marianne Moadi and I have a more general question that way I, I prefer to ask it for now before you go into the, <laughs> the GitHub topics. Uh, my question is, um, are you aware about the, the work which has been, which is under Definition of work in um, I Etsy project 1M2M uh, because there there is um, a data model which is quite generic, which is also doing some interworking with other uh, protocols like VB. And I would like to, to know if you had a look at this uh, project, Etsy project and what they are doing and because they they also have a data model they, they are starting release five of the of the of the one m2m and they are using a, a new data model which is a smart device template which is quite generic looks like like <laughs> like you are doing with one dm so i would like to have your view and it, and to know if you had a look to to the that project. Um, yes, we did. And in fact, I don't believe Alan Soloway is on, but um, Alan in the earlier days represented one data model. Um, we we did look at SDT and we think that this approach is compatible with SDT. We um, we also, though SDT didn't exactly, so SDT is more of an interface, system interface description. So what we would see is SDT uh, as being like uh, maybe W3C thing description and other formats that would be generated from this you know, device, very, very device specific um, representation in SDF. But also we, we were not able to follow up much with uh, one um, with that organization because of the um, participation of Huawei in that group and the fact that we were operating as a liaison group with U.S. companies and so we were we had to keep uh, some distance between one M to M and our group uh, during the period of the U.S. Commerce Department um, you know spot regulation that they did to to limit interaction with Huawei. That's since been uh, lifted and we can go back and we can in, we can now work with, well, two things. All of our work is in the open. So we don't really function as a liaison organization anymore, uh, strictly under undercover. So we can work with any other organization now. So when we come back, uh, we would definitely <laughs> welcome uh, 1M to M to be back in our group discussing and harmonizing with SDT. 
Um, it's unfortunate that we weren't able to have them as part of the process all along, but I think we got enough interaction through Alan's participation that we're able to, uh, you know, more or less, uh, more or less stay, keep up. But, but yeah, I think it's, 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 uh, there's an opportunity now going forward to, to um, uh, work more closely with 1MTM and we'd like to do that. Okay, good. Because they, they are also working on, on flex container instances and what you were describing uh, just before is exactly the same kind of way the data are uh, addressed in in 1M, 2M, trying to make them more generic, but being at the same time being able to, to be speci specialized or specific. So yes, it would be benefit, <laughs> benefit for both uh, of the two groups to work together. And that's, that's, that's basically a, a one data model uh, uh, interaction, but also Definitely in the SDF language, as the users of 1M to M would uh, want to use SDF also in their tools and workflow. And we also have similar outreach with uh, um, the digital twin. There's a group in Microsoft that isn't really an open standard, but a group in Microsoft that's, well, they, they do publish everything as open source that's working on a digital twin language that has a lot of the same parallel constructions that we want to harmonize at the language level as well. So it's beyond just the models, but it's more also harmonizing at the, at the language level. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And actually that is one of the extra, uh, so sorry, that, that, that is actually one of the, one of the reasons to bring this work from 1DM to IETF is to get broader participation of people who might see a use of this. Uh, for the very reasons we talked about at the beginning, that it was hard to to find one solution that everybody could migrate to instead of if, if people were able to use SDF as the kind of background or, or, or translation tool that were that made people happy. So this is definitely very much about ensuring that we have trying to get as big big potential use of SDF as possible, reaching out to as many IoT and related organizations as possible. So that work is ongoing. <clears throat> well, thank you. It's a good point. Absolutely. Yes. Any further, other questions? Other questions? Should we go into, uh, can you share uh, your browser, Michael? Uh, okay, so have, that, uh, that was yeah. really my next question is, let me see, I have- We only have like 10 minutes, but- um... Oh, sure. Let's see, let me grab it. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I'm... It says I'm sharing my web browser, but I'm not seeing. Oh, there it is. Well, that's weird. I get another pane. Okay, cool. So, um, oops, that's not it. There it is. Okay, so currently I've, uh, in the SDF repo on one data model GitHub, we have four open issues that roughly correspond to the four categories and their enum type, reusable property types. For, is this a good size for everyone? Everyone can see fine. No one's complaining. Can you okay. Make it a little, little larger, please. <laughs> it's hard to see. Okay. Thank you. So, um, right. So, the, so the put, trick but, is to make your window smaller so that not to hit control plus so that it transmits fewer oh. bits and winds up bigger on our screen. It's completely. Well, in, thank it's you. I, I never thought, you know, you're right. Right. I, I get it. <laughs> but I never really thought about it like that before. Uh, yeah. Hang on. No, I have my, I have the weird sort of, where's the, where's the, where's the toolbar kind of thing. Okay. There. Yeah. And then just, just like make that, that window. There. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that didn't work on your Mac because your Mac is transmitting your entire screen. Oh, well, let, let's do it differently then. Yeah. But anyway, I think we can, we can use the plus to get, it, to let's, make it bigger. No, let's do it this way. Yeah. 
That should work better. No, it 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 doesn't on that because it's Mac and because of your choice of browser, but that's fine. <laughs> so what should I do? Go back to full screen? No, it's fine. You're fine. It's, yeah. Oh, but I it, see. It probably just gets smaller on your screen, doesn't it? And doesn't. That's right. Yeah, okay. I, I know what it looks like. I I know what I've been on the other end of that now. Now that you mention it. Okay. So here we are. Anyway. Um, and we have four open issues. And uh, everyone will have to use their own magnifiers, I guess. So um, I don't know what. There's some discussion on each one. Do you do you want to like sort of like just trip through them briefly? Start with the yeah. Email. That that would be really yeah. good. Yeah. That would be really good uh, to um, engage. Okay, so we've been talking about enum for a while. Um, and, and I'll just sort of lay out the discussion here as I see it. And Wilder, Wilder has well, an ad, because Alan's not on, but Wilder can chime in. Um, so currently, as Karsten said, SDF, or Enum is currently just a JSON schema.org feature that allows you to specify an array of values. And that's all it, all it is. They don't even have to be the same value type. So we've, we've tried to constrain um, our use of JSON schema.org enum by saying they have to be, at one point we said they had to be string value pairs that had the mapping built right in. And then I think we backed off on that because, you know, we really wanted it to be abstract. But but just putting a, a just having an array of strings um, is, is something that uh, doesn't have a lot of the qualities I was talking about earlier, like uh, the JSON pointers to it are just array indexes, and they don't have any uh, way of adding any more uh, <laughs> SDF qualities to each, like descriptions and, and other things that you might want to do in mapping hints and things, and, and it's difficult to have mapping uh, information to them. But again, enum, we might want to expand it out more and have some IETF or sorry, IANA registration in a namespace and things like that. So here's here's the discussion. Basically, um, you know, Alan is asking for a mapping. So it's it's mainly around the abstraction. Um, so and and Wilder's point is, I think what we all agree on is that we really need to represent semantic values and shouldn't have the mapping in the enum. But where we where we haven't really agreed yet is what that should, whether we could just use JSON schema enum as, uh, and just say that they have to be strings and the strings have to be, you know, some something special, or we add this uh, um, proposed SDF enum class to the, to the vocabulary, to the language. Uh, well, that, that does, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so there's water. Yeah. I I think the way out of this is to have a combination. So I just like to have the the same thing as uh, the JSON syntax because that's clean, although it has deficits that you can't annotate anything further. So I didn't write it down, but I think I wrote a few emails about it already. Is that I think I just want to keep using the enum as is, and that we can have a list of enum values like SDF enum, similar to say what else that value can mean. So, uh, and I, I think we already agreed that it would be a bad habit in combining enums of different types in a single enumeration. So you don't want to have a value one uh, as an integer and a string, you don't want to do that. That's just uh, an awful design. And I think we already agreed on not doing that more than two years ago. Okay, so it sounds like where we are now with five minutes left in the in the agenda today is that we need to look at, so I have provided an example here of a thing that uses SDF enum so it sounds like you're proposing a pattern that uses JSON schema.org enum with some additional um, annotation. And I could think of a few different ways that might work. So I, I think we need an example of that. Well, fr frankly, the only difference that I can see is that the SDF enum 
value on, I think I see that correctly, on, yeah. that is being used as a standard uh, value somewhere uh, as a normal JSON enum. And I think that would work. And then you can even say uh, it has the scope of the same document, but uh, what would you do if there are two enum values called on in the same file? Are they the same or are they different? But uh, I frankly, I think if we define on, that it always will be the same. So, yes, I think there would be additional things that we can do that we can list those enum values out, maybe in IANA or whatever, but start standardizing them in a larger scope than just the scope of the model itself. And I think that's the, the, the real problem with enum values. Uh, do, are they scoped to the model or is it scoped to the domain or even larger than a domain? So the, but uh, that's okay. That's, that's really part of the discussion also. So if they're scoped to the model, so we always provide a way in SDF to have a standalone data definition. So certainly they could be scoped within say one DM by having an SDF file that is for the domain, if you will, or for, for um, one DM even. So you could have a, a standalone SDF data definition with the enum. And, and, and I think for what you point out, it is an industry problem right now, these enums, because you have products that really could be harmonized in, in uh, control modes and things like that, like ovens and fans and cooktops and a, a lot of things that really should be harmonized. And um, providing a place to do that for enums is, is good. And I was thinking, you know, one DM could do that by using SDF data definitions and having those be at some root uh, um, entry point, you know, so you could say, here's all the enums that you can reuse in any data definition you want. But, but a good point that has been made that maybe we should go beyond one DM and say, this is an IANA thing and have some registrations there. But I think nonetheless, we need to see some specific, get, get down to some specific examples of what the SDF file looks like when it uses um, these, these other patterns. And I know, I know it sounds simple, but it, maybe then it won't take long to develop a couple of concrete examples, just so we can have a, a, a discussion on the trade-off. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what it would look like. I can provide I can say, okay, if we had to use the, well, first, you know, I guess. But so what I would, what I would suggest at this point mm -hmm. is rather yeah. than going too far into the detail, um, because as you said, we were, we were at the end of the thing, this is actually a really good thing to, to, to whet our appetite for the next meeting. Exactly. Um, yeah. so is, is if we could, uh, describe the question well enough such that we can put it in, it could literally, it can be literally the first agenda item next time. Um, and and is there a second item that you an issue that you'd like to bring up right now um that may be equally um enticing <laughs> is that the right word yeah the, the 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 second problem that i was hinting at and that was already mentioned by michael as well in at this moment, we model things very, very, very flat, which is not a bad thing. But if you want to do more complex things with media, then uh, it would be good to have uh, more compound statements like that you have uh, data within JSON data, basically JSON support of JSON nested JSON objects to describe how that is on the wire. That's everybody's own choice. But I think having that kind of grouping functionality would be a, a, a nice addition. And I think this is another great example of where, um, where I'm, I'm proposing some kind of abstract way of doing that that doesn't actually use the JSON schema.org. And I think Wouter is looking for some solution that's closer to just looking at like a JSON object. Um, 
But, you know, again, I think we need to look at some concrete examples because sometimes it makes sense to have, you know, and I think Karsten brings up, how do you, how does the naming work? And so maybe as another, uh, for another second issue, we can have some comments on this issue that, that uh, get closer to the question of whether to just reuse the JSON schema.org thing directly or whether we need to have a more elaborate SDF way of doing it. I think if I captured Water's uh, question, maybe. Well, I can give a few examples of yeah. uh, what OCF is doing with media. So I you think that's what we want to look at. Yeah, is that yeah, you're uh, that, yeah. And then immediately you can see that it's complex and flattening it out. Well, you can flatten it out. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's just ugly modeling wise. So. Um, if that if that would be the total consensus in that everything needs to be flattened out, um, well, so be it. But uh, that would not be my first preference. I, I'm not sure it's sufficient either, because in the examples I've looked at, it's important to say that you in in at the even at the abstract level, it's important to say that you're providing an interaction that gives you this data um, as part of the interaction that's more than one data element. And even having to do that, I think, is where you start introducing the, the grouping issue and whether whether you want to add structure or keep it structure neutral, those are some of the fine points. But I think once you've gone down that path, it's like, you, you know, there needs to be the, all these questions come up. Do I have to name them all or can I just point to a bunch of them? And I think we need to, uh, that's where we need to go next then. So I, I guess, uh, Michael, is this what you were looking for a second a second issue to put on the agenda? Yeah, some, yeah. something something to that would yeah, and that was a really good explanation about the flatness versus not and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm just surprised when I scroll my mouse that your screen does your screen doesn't scroll now. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so well, we need um, a tool that works that way, but um, that's a different discussion for a different yeah, time. Exactly, just startled me for a moment that that didn't work. Um, so, um, uh, so that's what I would propose as a structure uh, is that um, we, we get into some, some issues. We, we want to probably um, give a high level notion of what the conflict is or the, 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 there. Um, and, um, you know, if they get resolved in the, the, the GitHub, that's great. If they don't, then, you know, that's the topic of discussion. Um, now, I think we decided that our next meeting would be the one at the IETF in November, or is that too far away? I think we aim to have a, try to have a virtual interim before, but we need to be scheduled as a working group before we can schedule a virtual interim. So I'm not quite sure we can make it time-wise. It's a bit tight. Yeah, I think, so it's what, it's going to be the second week of November? Oh. So I'm probably, we are, we are, we are at the very end of, of, of uh, October, if you want to, if there's two week time before you can, if you want to schedule a meeting. So we could target something for the week of October 26th, which is in two weeks. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I think we should be able to, later this week we should be able to officially do that. Um, so is that a good time? This 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 slot is good for for people, or at least the people who came. Obviously, it was good for them. Yeah, I don't know if we okay? try to find a slot with. Should we try to find a slot that is more friendly to the U.S. or? Uh... Michael, I don't, mind, anyway. but I, I don't mind at all. But Michael, <laughs> he has to get up and walk. He has to get up yeah, and walk his dog anyway. Because yeah, don't ask me. I'm always up at this time. But um, yeah. I think it'd be okay. I, I know, you know, we can probably get like uh, Alan Soloway. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, and some, I'm just thinking of individuals. No one I know. A lot of these folks are in the next time zone over, and it's like much. Even the difference yeah. between six and seven is a big deal for us in the U.S. I guess. Yep. <laughs> I think it's okay for now. Okay. And then if, so, if, if, you know, if we think that that's a problem, we can shift it later. 
And it's also lines up with the one DM slot with a lot of the people already doing this, but we're thinking for the model convergence stuff, we're going to need a new slot that's more friendly to other folks anyway. So this is this is turns out to be a, a slot that people already have on their calendars. Okay, so, so Nicholas and I are going to organize uh, another meeting probably for two weeks from today. Um, and then we have a, a meeting scheduled for IETF 109. Um, and uh, the, the the process of running things through um, with the um, on GitHub, we may want to transition this this repo from one data model to ASDF, but I think that's something we can discuss offline. Yeah, we were we were planning on yeah. moving the when we yeah. get the WG form, we were going to move the repo. Yep, to yeah, an IETF or, repo. Or if that's the only thing there you could just read we could just rename the org as you as i don't know what makes more sense but anyway um okay so is there anything else today that anyone wants to bring up as part of the meeting content before we go our own ways thank you for the slides karsten and michael I think it really bit into the Thank content you. really well. Um, and with that, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you.